I mean, preparation, th this is the part that gets me. Did they come up with a whole new game plan? Did Green Bay, the year after Brett left, totally change around the, the entire offensive game plan? No, it's the same thing. The Green Bay offense looks the same now as it did when Favre was playing. I mean, it's run the same. So, realistically, Brett Favre could have waited until the regular season started, jumped right in, and not missed a beat. He's familiar with the system. The system hasn't changed. The Green Bay was, that's called an excuse. Well, we want to, we got to move, we got to get our team going the right direction and get it all together. It's a, Brett Favre wasn't going to throw a, a fork into that. I mean, he wasn't going to mess up your system. No way. Totally mishandled by Green Bay and, and totally misinterpreted by Green Bay fans. I mean, 100%. For some reason, they took it as Brett Favre was breaking up with them. No. No, the owners wanted him out. They wanted to move forward. Forget 13-3, and three, they want 6-10, and 10, Aaron Rodgers. And Packer fans are so delusional. I don't understand. It's like you're the same type of people that break up with your girlfriend or boyfriend, and then a couple of weeks later when you find out they're dating someone else, you think that they're the bad person about it. You get mad at them. No, you broke up with... You broke up with them. They're allowed to do that. Brett Favre is allowed to go play for another team. He's allowed to go play for Minnesota. Like it or not, he is. Well, that's our rival. You can't just, I mean, that'd be like going and dating, you know, someone's best friend. So what? So what? You didn't want him anymore. It gets time to move on and get over it. And the booing, the it, it just the, the overwhelming... Just it, just it was so loud. All the boos were so loud, and it, you know it's showing a close up of Brett's face. I thought he might cry. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I thought he might. He cried when he thought he was going to retire. Why wouldn't he cry then? I thought he was going to cry. He looked so sad. It, it was like, I mean, it, you you got to think that a guy like Favre, when he goes back to Green Bay and he thinks of Green Bay and he thinks of the fans in Green Bay, I mean that's like his old family. I mean that. That's like, that's like people that he's always loved and known and felt so close to, just booing him and hating him. I mean, I, that must have hurt. And this guy dedicated over 15 years, almost 20 years, to this organization and to this community, and to be welcomed back like that, embarrassing. Green Bay, really, really embarrassing. I mean. It, like, I can't believe it. Listen, Michael Jordan played for the Wizards, and he went back into Chicago and played the Bulls. Did he get booed? Not even close. Standing ovation. As he should have. As should have Brett Favre when he went back into Green Bay. I mean, it, it, I, and I used to, I never had a problem with Green Bay fans. I'm not one of these people because I live in Illinois, and a lot of people in Illinois don't like, uh, you know, Green Baby. They don't like Packers. So they boo the Packers. You know, they, they don't like them. And but I'm not one of those people. I'm not a Bears fan. So I don't have any, like, ill will towards the Packers. I just don't, I don't have any. But I was glad to see the Vikings win that game. I was glad to see the Packers lose. And I was glad to see Packers fans go home disappointed and upset that they were beat by their old quarterback. Listen, I think they I think they did the wrong thing. I think them booing Favre, uh, you can't, listen, you can't challenge an athlete of his caliber uh, with a competitive level that high. You can't challenge a guy like that to come out and kill you, which is what they did. Mike makes a good point. He says, Green Bay, they, they should boo their offensive line. Exactly. That's exactly who they should boo. But think about how good Aaron Rodgers would be if he could stand up for more than three seconds after the ball was hiked. I mean, two and a half. But a guy like Brett Favre, you know, being through as many games as he's been through, accomplished as much as he's accomplished, one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play, 
they did the wrong thing. They had, they got him motivated. Listen, this he could have came in if they would have given him a standing ovation. It, he would have become emotional and and kind of caught up and overwhelmed in the moment. And then and then we we might have seen the Brett Favre that you know got a little overexcited in the moment and got a little. Uh, you know, made a few mistakes, got a little, you know, you get, that's kind of what I was looking for going into this game. But I think with the treatment he got from Green Bay fans, I think all that was was motivation. And you saw what happened, Brett Favre, four touchdown passes, Minnesota wins. Four touchdown passes. I think you did it to yourselves, Green Bay. I totally think you did it to yourselves. I think by treating him like that when he came in, I, I boy, I think you let something off inside of Favre and then instead of being sad and hurt that that he was getting the treatment he was getting it was time for him uh, it, you know it, it, it turned into anger and a guy like Favre really 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 wanted to beat you on your own turf and he did and bad and that's what you get and that's what you get I just don't understand I don't understand the logic behind this all he did for Green Bay Everything he did for Green Bay, and he just gets booed ridiculously, just like he doesn't, like he's not welcome there. I mean, it should have been a standing ovation. At least when he's introduced, you know, and then go about the game in the regular way as fans. You know, cheer for your team, maybe boo for the other team, but don't just, don't do what you did to Brett Favre. I mean, that was, there was no class in that. And as a football community, I, I have to say Green Bay has always kind of had, uh, you know, you've never had the reputation as, as being without class in any way. I mean, it, I would say around the league, aside from like Bears fans and people that actually have a rivalry with you, I, nobody dislikes you. I think everybody thinks that, that Green Bay's cool enough, you know, fans are cool enough, whatever. Not now, I mean, now, I don't know. I can tell you what I think. I mean, I, I'm, I'm glad when you lose now. I think you're a bunch of jerks. A bunch of cheese-licking jerks. How do you like that? <laughs> uh, but Mike really wants me to talk NBA. Hey, man, you know, I'll get... Listen. I do, uh, I do things a little differently, you know? I don't... You know, I don't just break down the game you know that Mike you know and sometimes I just want to rant and rave on a certain topic for most of the show and then I'll just do the fantasy football face punch and I'll I need to be inspired to talk about something that's why I don't really come in with a lot of topics when I do shows because there's usually only a few things that I really want to talk about you know and NBA as much as I'm interested and as excited as I am that it's here you know there's not too much that I, you know, that I really want to break down just yet. We're getting there. You know, we're getting there. 